right, so today, this is hopefully the last video of building all the components we need to start the next project. Now, last video was building the bearing carriers, video before that was building the CV spool. This video, we need to build the spindles for the front as well as we need to go get the engine we're gonna be using for this project. Now, to kind of save us some time because we're already borrowing the front tires off of the KFX 700, I also decided to borrow the front hubs off of that thing, so therefore we don't have to build new hubs. All we have to build is the spindles. bunch of this green slime stuff. I hate that stuff. It doesn't really work. It's really only good for like emergencies and it just makes an absolute mess inside the tire. see any leaks which is awesome so I wanted to get slightly smaller tires for this project so the original tire was 22 inches tall these are 20 inches tall so two inches smaller the rims are a little bit beat up but as long as I hold pressure
All right, need to measure the kingpin angle and scrub radius to make sure it's correct for this, these spindles. So measuring the center of the heim joint to the ruler, making sure it's the same on top and bottom, then measure the bottom, bottom of the ruler to where it lands on the inside of the tire. Then it's about, it's about an inch from the center of the tire, which is I believe what you want. I believe you want the scrub radius about an inch, and these tires are a little bit overinflated, so once they are proper level, it should be a little bit more than an inch. So I think that's pretty good. I want to double check to make sure we have proper suspension travel, because we can always adjust it by moving this plate up and down before we make the other plates that go here and here. Yeah, downward travel of the frame I think is pretty good. We don't want it too close to the ground. Upward travel. Yeah, I think that is plenty. So I hope we also have plenty of steering. This is why I mount these hind joints horizontal instead of vertical because it allows for plenty of suspension travel and an incredible amount of steering angle. Whereas if you mount these hind joints vertical like this, you wouldn't have that much steering angle and you'd have more suspension travel than you do. Because actually steering requires more angle than suspension travel. So as long as you angle these correctly when mounting them horizontal like this, you get plenty of suspension travel and plenty of steering angle. Whereas if you mounted them vertical like this, you'd be really limited with the amount of steering angle you can have, but you'd have pl way too much suspension travel. So. So for right now, this is as far as I can get with these spindles because we need to figure out how exactly we're going to be mounting the brake caliper onto these because look at this, this is the spindle that I'm copying. You can kind of see on here how the mounts for the brake caliper are recessed into it, into this, and this one's going to be a little bit wider so we have to do the same with this one. So I bought new brake calipers because the ones on the KFX 700, they're kind of old, they're they're kind of sticky, the brakes always kind of stuck on a little bit, so I bought new ones for this project. So once those get here, then we can figure out exactly how we're going to be mounting them in these spindles, and then we can finish these up. But for now, while we're waiting that, for that stuff to get here, this is kind of as far as we can get with this stuff. Now, yes, I was considering for the longest time to just use the spindles off of that quad, because we're temporarily borrowing the front tires in these hubs off of that KFX 700 quad that I have. And I was also considering just using the spindles and the A-arms as well, but it's like, I, I, I'm trying not to have that thing become a parts vehicle. I do eventually want to finish rebuilding that thing or get it working and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's going to be a lot easier just replacing the front tires and the hubs than replacing tires, hubs, spindles, and A-arms on that thing. So that's why I'm building my own spindles and my own A-arms. For this project, I'm just merely borrowing the front tires and these hubs. Also, these hubs are not in great shape. Uh, I don't know if I've already said this, but these brake discs are heavily worn down. Also, the bearings need replacing, the seals need replacing, so I bought new bearings, new seals, and new brake discs for this. So once that stuff gets here, as well as the brake caliper gets here, we can uh, finish the spindles and swap this stuff out. But for now, let's, you know, we just, yeah, this is kind of as far as we can get for right now. So. Next thing let's do is we gotta go get the engine we're gonna be using for this project. I bought this vehicle well over a year ago. It's been sitting outside getting rained on. So hopefully it's still good. Hopefully the engine still works and everything. So let's go get it. Let's get it in here and let's remove the engine from that vehicle so therefore we can use it for this new project. Hopefully that'll work.
I found another snowmobile. This is only the second snowmobile I've ever found because I live in North Carolina. It's a little hard to find these things, but uh, it just so happens to be another Polaris XLT 600. This one's a special edition, which I have no idea what that means. I think it's a little bit newer than the other one I bought years and years ago. I believe this one's a 1998, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah, this is the engine we're going to be using for this new project. So let's take this thing apart. Let's remove all the components we want to keep off of this thing, and then I'll think of something else to do with all the other components that I don't really want. So the good thing about not caring about what condition I put this thing apart in, I can do things like this. Man, these things are blown out. The rubber is totally cracked. Look at that. Yeah, the rubber bump stops are totally cracked. So it's like, are these even worth salvaging? Taking the stuff off because there's no way I'm throwing this stuff away. What is still connected on this stupid thing? There we go. Man, that thing did not want to come off. Nice. Nice. <laughs> that was not easy. Alright, I almost forgot to look in here, so... Cool, I got an extra handle, some pliers, socket, 5 8 wrench, score, Phillips, more sockets, 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 and a half working, what are those clips called? I don't know. All right, I think that is everything I want to keep off of this. I don't need the gas tank, I don't need the coolant rails, whatever these are called. This thing just pissed all over me. Really? 
Yeah, this engine is definitely not great on compression, so I can turn it over with almost one finger. So <laughs> this thing's probably probably gonna need to rebuild. So, we now have most of the stuff we need to start this new project. I'm not going to say exactly what that new project is just yet, but you guys will find out soon enough. Now, we now have the engine, we have the spool, we have the rear hubs, we have uh, the spindles. We weren't able to finish the spindles in this video, but that's not the end of the world. At least they're mostly built, which is what we need right now. We can finish those later on. I'm really hoping this engine's good and everything. It does feel like it's really low on compression, but I did look. I looked up uh, new pistons, new rings, and a complete gasket set for this thing. It was only 280 bucks, which is not bad at all. But it does get more expensive if I need to replace the jugs, because hopefully the jugs aren't heavily worn out or scored or anything. But it's a two-stroke, so it's not going to be super expensive if we do need to rebuild this thing. But uh, anyway, next video of this project, we can finally start working on the frame and everything and figure out the, the whole layout of how we're building this thing. I think you guys can t take a guess on, yes, it's going to be another off-road vehicle, but it's uh, this one we're doing a kind of off-road vehicle, but with a little twist. So anyway, guess that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.